This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Wednesday, the 15th day of April in the year 2020. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here's what we're tracking tonight. Guyana has now recorded seven new confirmed cases of the coronavirus in the past 24 hours, taking the total number of confirmed cases to 55. In the daily Ministry of Public Health update for today, the Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sham Prasad revealed that a total of 250 tests have now been completed. 26 tests were done done within the past 24 hours. The total number of persons in the COVID-19 ICU remains at 5. The persons who have tested negative total 195 and 8 persons have so far recovered. In our quarantine and isolation facilities, the number stands at 25 and 41 respectively and there are 5 persons in our COVID ICU. Of the 55 positive COVID-19 cases, four are known to have travel history, and the other 51 persons contracted the coronavirus here in Guyana. Our confirmed cases in Region 4 represent more than 80%, and most of the cases occur in Georgetown. Region 4 remains the region with the highest number of cases. 80% of those who tested positive are from Region 4, with most of those cases in Georgetown. The majority of those who tested positive are males. To date, most of those who tested positive are males. In the over 50 age group, male and females are almost equally affected. However, in the 30 to 49 years age group, most of those who tested positive, almost four to one, are males as compared to females. And the chief medical officer also reminded that persons with symptoms of COVID-19, which include fever and coughing, should make contact with the hotline, especially if they have underlying conditions that may have affected their immune system. You have been hearing in the news that persons with underlying conditions are more at risk. So let me share with you a little bit more on these conditions. Chronic lung diseases such as asthma and bronchitis, as well as those associated with smoking. High blood pressure and heart diseases, diabetes, and high blood sugar in some persons, and diseases associated with immunocompromised conditions such as HIV, cancer, and, the tre and, and its treatment, along with lupus and other such conditions. In Guyana, a large proportion of adults as early as those in the mid-20s are affected by some of these conditions and are at high risk for the development of the more serious forms of COVID-19, which results in hospitalization, ICU care, and even death no one is exempted. The first case of the coronavirus in Guyana was recorded on the 11th of March. There have been six deaths from the virus. More news coming up in a moment. Parents and guardians, you are encouraged to tune in to the Guyana Learning Channel, Cable 29 or Channel 42 for daily educational and interactive learning sessions. The nursery program airs from 6 hours to 9 hours. Primary programs from 9 hours to 12 noon. We also air informative documentaries from 12 noon to 13 hours. And our secondary level programs are aired from 13 hours to 15 hours. Please continue to listen to our radio broadcasts. The interactive radio instruction for grades 1 to 3 daily on Voice of Guyana from 9 hours 30 to 10 hours for grade 1 pupils, from 10 hours 30 to 11 hours for grade 2s, and 13 hours to 13 hours 30 for grade 3 pupils. Please remember to tune in to benefit from these educational opportunities. A message from the Ministry of Education. The world is grappling with an attack to the body's immune system. Many are dying daily from a most dreaded virus, of pandemic proportions. Recent studies adopted by local medical experts shows vitamin C and D are finally being used in the conventional treatment of the novel coronavirus. Boost your immune system with the ultimate booster now available at Sheriff Medical Center on Sheriff Street. Following all medical guidelines, the immune booster is taken intravenously 
directed the bloodstream to guard the system from COVID-19. A mixture of glutathione, vitamin C and E all working together to form a defense barrier against viruses. Time is critical as the virus rages on. Sheriff Medical Center, we are in the global fight to save humanity. GBTI is your Guyanese bank, a bank that understands every customer's unique needs, opportunities, challenges, and financial concerns. At GBTI, we see you for you. Whether you're buying a new home or car, planning your next vacation or retirement, saving for your child's future, or whether you're ready to take that bold step of investing in your dream business idea, we are with you every step of the way. We hear your stories and watch you focus on your dreams as we share your aspirations. We are more than just banking. We are a family. We are part of your community. Our commitment extends way beyond the walls of our branches and is demonstrated every day in the opportunities we provide to our individual and business customers. The support, time, and commitment we give back to communities across Guyana to help improve the lives of our Guyanese families because we see Guyana through your eyes. Guyol Super 95 gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance, and high mileage, choose Guyol's Super 95 Gasoline. Fuel it up and drive! Tired of long lines? Register with MyGTT at mygtt.co.gy. That's mygtt.co.gy to view and pay your bills from anywhere. Enter to win an Amazon gift card worth 25 US dollars or a bounty voucher worth 5,000 Guyana dollars when you sign up today. GTT, do more. Are you washing your hands correctly? Here are some tips on when and how to wash your hands. Step 1. Wet your hands with clean water. Step 2. Then apply soap. Step 3. For 10 to 15 seconds, lather your palms together. Always remember to pay attention to your fingers, especially your nails and tips. And don't forget the back and between of your fingers. Step 4. Rinse hands with clean water for about 20 seconds. Step 5. Dry hands with a clean paper towel or tissue. But when should you wash your hands? After using the toilet, before and after eating, preparing or handling uncooked food, after playing with pets or caring for animals, after sneezing and coughing or blowing your nose, before and after changing babies or caring for others. Frequent hand washing or using a hand sanitizer with alcohol as an alternative will remove viruses and bacteria from your hands. A message from the Ministry of Public Health in collaboration with PAHU WHO. Welcome back. Well, after touring the Arthur Chung Convention Center this midday and wrapping up their meeting this afternoon, the Ghana Elections Commission is still to settle on the number of workstations to be used for the recount. The Commission is now expected to meet tomorrow morning to work out that issue, which appears like the final stumbling block for the recount. One of the issues that we did not get to discuss the finality is on the number of uh, counting stations that can be accommodated. You'd appreciate that a part of the process that uh, that was dependent on the site visit we did today. Um, it was the last item that we discussed, and like I said, we did not discuss it the finality. We are meeting again tomorrow. The commission is looking at two proposals for the number of workstations, with the government nominated commissioner Vincent Alexander proposing a total of eight workstations, while the opposition nominated commissioner says Kunaraj is proposing 20. Mr. Alexander said the 20 workstations proposed by the other side would see workstations being set up in the yard on their tents for the recount. He expressed some issue with that, pointing to security and other concerns. I have made a recommendation for eight workstations. I've made a recommendation for two workstations 
in the eastern wing of the auditorium. And the secretariat to occupy the third part of that auditorium. I've made a recommendation for two workstations in the western wing. And that caters now for uh, four so far. I've made a recommendation for a workstation in the dining hall. And that will give us five. I've made a recommendation for a workstation in the western half of the courtyard. That will give us six. I've made a recommendation that dining should be done in the eastern half of the courtyard. And I've made a recommendation that further consideration could be given to the possibility of two workstations, one on the eastern patio and one on the western patio. Those who are proposing 20 workstations are actually saying let's not even work in the building. Let's work on tents in the yard. I have a difficulty with working in tents in the yard. I think it poses a serious security problem and it's likely to lead us into the kind of mob behavior that occurred at Ashmill. And we have to avoid that. Outside of that issue, most of the other issues related to the recount have been finalized by the Elections Commission. Most of the decisions in relation to the count were made. We took a decision in terms of what would be the nature of the recount. And for all intents and purposes, we have emphasized and re-emphasized that this is not an, a, a, a recount provided for under representation of the People's Act. And that any reference to that act is for convenience, since there are things in there that already exist that could be used. And so we referred Section 83, Section 87, and section 83, 84, 87, and 89, 1 of the Representation of the People's Act. A total of four GCOM staffers will be in each workstation, with the political parties providing one agent each for each workstation, and the combined observer team also providing one person for each station. The CARICOM team will be overlooking the process that will be supervised by the Elections Commission. Today's meeting was adjourned as the chairman of the Elections Commission thought it best that the Commission staffers be allowed to leave before the start of the 6 p.m. coronavirus curfew. Well, as Guyana awaits the start of the recounting of votes cast at the 2nd of March elections, the observer mission from the Organization of American States is urging the Guyana Elections Commission to have a transparent and consistent recount process. In a statement issued this afternoon, the OAS mission expressed concern that five weeks after the elections in Guyana, the country is still awaiting a final outcome. The OAS wants GCOM to ensure that the procedures for the recount are transparent and consistent, that the instructions to election officials conducting the recount are unambiguous and based on the provisions of the relevant laws and that the public be fully informed of the methodology to be used. The OAS team is also requesting that the Elections Commission take particular care to ensure that the officials to be engaged in the recount are selected based on their impartiality and those who have displayed partisan behavior are excluded. The observer group also wants the duly authorized representatives of political parties and accredited observers to be allowed to see but not handle each ballot and for the legal provisions for challenging the determination of ballots be fully respected. Additionally, the OAS team is requesting that the Commission ascertains whether the number of ballots cast corresponds with the number of persons recorded as having voted and for the results of the recount for each polling station be compared with a statement of poll signed by the presiding officer. The mission said it remains engaged to assist the people of Guyana in ensuring that their will prevails and that Guyana's position as an internationally respected democracy is restored and preserved. The Observer Mission fumed at an earlier proposal from the Elections Commission Secretariat which stated that a recount could take up to 156 days. The OS Observer Team said such a time period to count less than 500,000 votes is unheard of. The original proposal was dismissed by the Elections Commission and the Elections Commission Secretariat has since explained that it was based on recommendations and requests put forward by some of the same commissioners themselves who later criticized the same plan.
With visits by attorneys and family members to the prisons in Guyana suspended because of the coronavirus, the Guyana Prison Service is turning to the internet to allow supervised virtual meetings between prisoners and their attorneys and families. In a statement today, Director of Prisons Gladwin Samuels explained that a recent donation of 30 tablets to the prison service by the Ministry of Public Telecommunications will allow the move to be made possible. He said the tablets will be distributed to the various prison heads across the country, and attorneys or relatives wanting to have virtual meetings meetings with those qualified prisoners will have to make bookings through the prison service ahead of time. The meetings will be done using the Google Hangout app and will be supervised. The tablets will be connected to the internet through the government's free Wi-Fi service. On the police blotter, a 32-year-old man from number 46 Village Quarantine has become the country's latest road accident victim. The deceased, who has been identified as Rakish Singh, was a passenger in a car driven by 24-year-old Kiran Benjamin when the driver slammed into a cow along the East Coast Highway at Good Hope. According to a police report, the accident occurred around 10 o'clock last night as the car was heading west when the driver slammed into the cow that was standing in the middle of the roadway. The entire front of the car was smashed and both the driver and passenger passenger were rushed to the hospital with multiple injuries. The driver was admitted in serious condition while the passenger Rakish Singh was pronounced dead on arrival at the hospital. The cow that was also killed in the smash-up was eventually removed from the scene as the investigators launched their probe. Turning our attention now to the courts, two of the men who allegedly broke into a Republic Park home and held its occupants at gunpoint while carrying out a Holy Thursday robbery have been charged and remanded to jail. 25-year-old Godfrey Lynch, also known as Follower of 5th Street Albert Town, and 20-year-old Anthony Johnson, also known as Big Life of 2nd Street Agricola, appeared at a Diamond Magistrate's Court this morning and pleaded not guilty to the charge of robbery on the arms. They are accused of breaking into the home of Republic Park resident Ryan Rajmangal and robbing him and his nephew of a quantity of jewelry and money. The entire robbery incident was captured on camera and the police force was able to arrest the suspects within days. The family members who were held at gunpoint were able to positively identify the suspects. The two have been remanded to jail until the 15th of May when the matter will come up again for hearing. Other suspects are being sought. Meanwhile, the 35-year-old brother of one of the robbery accused was charged and granted bail for receiving stolen property. The man, Gregory Boyce of Durban and Smite Streets, was arrested and charged after he was found in possession of one of the stolen pieces of jewelry. Boyce is the older brother of the robbery accused, Godfrey Lynch. He pleaded not guilty to the charge against him and was granted bail in a sum of $75,000. He will also make his next court appearance on the 15th of May. Across the Region is coming up next. Wondering how you can access free learning materials for your children? Parents and guardians, please visit the Ministry of Education's website at www.education.gov.gy to access textbooks, past papers, and practice tests to keep your child engaged in continuous learning. When you have accessed the site, go to the Students tab, wait for a second, and choose the appropriate option. You now have access to the resources you need. You are encouraged to take advantage of this opportunity as we strive to provide the best education for the nation children a message from the Ministry of Education They've made a positive impact on the heavy-duty transportation industry in Guyana since they've arrived. Guyanese are amazed at their power, durability, efficiency, and superior handling capabilities. These are brand new trucks, manufactured in partnership with German, Italian, and French companies. They have a powerful reputation for operating under very adverse Guyanese conditions and come with full after-sales service and spare parts. They're the most sought-after trucks today, with over 500 units in Guyana, and they're available in over 100 countries, including South America and the Caribbean. Caribbean. Be smart by brand new ST Howa trucks today. Call 608-4998 and arrange for an inspection at ST Truck and Incorporated, Block B, Public Road Covenant, East Bank, Demerara. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways knowing that's what being a man is all about and ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing stand strong be the one to live right falls a trademark of china zhanghao incorporated located at land of canaan east bank demerara was incorporated in April of 2013, with over 10 billion Ghana dollars invested in a state-of-the-art 100,000 barrel fuel storage facility. 
a modern service station, an office complex and a modern wharf that can berth international vessels. Having no association with any other fuel company, Falls imports its own fuel, which meets quality specifications, has all the legal permits, and is in compliance with international requirements. Its bulk facility can load eight trucks simultaneously at a rate of 1,000 liters per minute, while the service station can service 12 cars at a time using computerized fuel pumps which can facilitate the use of ATM cards. Through its professional team of mostly Guyanese, Falls wholesales and retails fuels to the public, including farmers and miners, and will continue to positively contribute to Guyana by providing quality products, service and attractive prices. Try Falls today for all your fuel needs. The following is an important message from the Ministry of Public Health. The National Public Health Reference Laboratory is the only authorized facility with the capacity to test for novel coronavirus or COVID-19. The laboratory provides the specific procedures for a collection of samples and can also request for testing to be done. Persons who need to be tested can fall within the following categories. Those with acute respiratory illness, persons with a travel history to countries reporting local transmission, and persons who have been in contact with confirmed cases, along with other clinical outlines. The Ministry of Public Health has a hotline to provide information on the coronavirus. The public can call 227-4986, extension 215, or 624-3067. Across the region right now, the Jamaican government says it is now considering protocols to permit the controlled re-entry of Jamaicans into the island as it maintains the closure of its borders in relation to the efforts to stop the spread of the coronavirus. In a statement, the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Jamaica, Kamina Johnson-Smith, said the Andrew Holness government is monitoring the situation of the 45 Jamaican ship workers aboard a cruise ship, Marilla Discovery 2, and that it will seek the most suitable arrangements and support for national overseas. The Jamaican Jamaican media has been reporting that the workers have been left heartbroken after the vessel was denied docking in Portugal. The report said that this came more than a week after the Jamaicans were unable to land in Kingston, Jamaica amid restrictions on all incoming passengers as part of the new COVID-19 arrangements. Jamaica has recorded more than 100 cases of the coronavirus. One of Brazil's most wanted criminals has been arrested in Mozambique after spending more than two decades on the run. Gilberto dos Santos, known as Fomijo, is accused of running drug trafficking operations for one of Brazil's most powerful gangs. The 49-year-old was arrested in Mozambique's capital, Maputo, on Monday in an international sting operation. It was carried out by Interpol, U.S. drug officials and the Brazilian Federal Police. The wanted man and alleged leader of the Sao Paulo-based First Capital Command drug gang is accused of shipping tons of cocaine around the world. And finally tonight, international news. U.S. President Donald Trump has been heavily criticized for halting funding for the World Health Organization amid the global coronavirus pandemic. Philanthropist Bill Gates, a major funder of the WHO, said it was as dangerous as it sounds. President Trump on Tuesday said the body had failed in its basic duty in its response to the coronavirus. The head of the World Health Organization said it was reviewing the cut's impact to ensure that its work continues uninterrupted. The WHO official also said it is the agent singular focus to stop the outbreak. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said it was not the time to cut funds to the World Health Organization, which he said is absolutely critical to the world's efforts to win the war against the coronavirus. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley, reporting.